out there, and this is a video all about how to swap your automatic transmission, your TJ or LJ, to a manual AX15 NV3550. Um, I made this video after going through many trials of trying to swap it and having a lot of issues around that, so I thought I'd make this video to help out anybody else who was hoping to do this swap. The first thing I want to recover in this video is what parts do you need? This seems to be a big mystery to people out there. It's actually not that many parts. Most of it uh, revolve around getting all the manual parts, the clutch pedal assembly, master slave cylinder, transmission, skid plates, and drivetrain. The list I put here on screen is kind of a basic list. Um, I will go in deeper into each of these items about what you need. Um, my particular part numbers are the parts I used that worked well for me, but as you know, every Jeep is a little bit different, so there might be some fitment issues as far as um, if you're doing a tummy tuck or not on your Jeep. As I went through this swap, I found that there was a lot of trial and error with finding the correct parts, especially the PCM, which is an entire section of this video as far as uh, what you need for that. The front drive shaft, rear drive shaft, those parts have to be ordered uh, as the last part of the swap uh, because depending on where your transfer case ends up, that's the length of the drive shaft you need. That will be dependent on your, your lift height, your skid plate height, and so on. As far as transmission options go, I went with the uh, Rockman Gear Terminator AX15 NV35 replacement transmission. Uh, just checked the website. It looks like they don't sell it anymore, but any AX15 or NV3550 transmission should work the same in the swap. And while you look at this parts list, you don't have to go new with everything, except for maybe the advanced adapters, bell housing adapter, as that I think might be a little hard to find used. The bell housing adapter and why we use that will be covered later in this video. While some of these parts listed on this page are not particularly necessary, they are definitely nice. Um, the transmission tunnel cover was a little bit of a hard part to find. Pretty expensive for what it is, but it keeps a lot of the hot air from coming into the cabin um, as there's a big hole left when you remove your old transmission tunnel cover. It also is necessary because I did a tummy tuck at the same time that I needed to correct my driveline angles as well as clear some room uh, between the tub and the skid plate. So that's why I have listed the JKS body lift as well as the CV double card and drive shaft uh, and slip yoke eliminator. Otherwise you'll end up having potential issues down the line with your driveline not being aligned. At this point we get to PCMs and sensors, probably the most confusing and most misunderstood part of this entire swap. Uh, the biggest thing you have to realize is you have to stick with the same PCM of your model year as well with the 2005 to 2006 PCMs the TCM or transmission control module was actually integrated directly into the PCM so you either have an automatic PCM or a manual PCM. Another differentiator between the different PCMs that you need to find is skim versus non-skim. Uh, luckily I'll go over how you can get around skim and how do you fix your skim if you have skim currently in the car. Um, there's also the 3CAT versus 1CAT O2 sensor um, depending on your model year, you may have uh, two pre-cats and one third cat, or you can have just one cat before the exhaust, and that makes a difference on which, which PCM you can use and, and how to find out which correct PCM to use. And probably the largest difference between the PCMs is the crank position sensor, which is a huge part of this swap to get correct, otherwise you'll never have a correct running Jeep or not running at all. Sourcing your PCM is probably going to be the largest hurdle you're going to face while doing the swap. Finding a PCM that's both working the correct style you need and of your model year, at least for the 2005 to 2006, took months for me. Uh, between dead PCMs, bad PCMs, uh, I had errors thrown because O2 heater circuits were dead, and then there's the programming, a programming aspect if you do need programming, which you most probably do. I went through a, pro a company called Hotwire Auto, uh, they did a very good job. They were only one of two maybe in the country that was able to get my uh, my PCM working correctly and removing skim, at least in my case, because I bought a skim ECU, which I'll go over in the next slide. Um, you also need to get, as listed, um, the part number. Uh, this is very important if you're trying to match up uh, similar PCMs. Personally, I went the route of buying used PCMs, uh, generally because you could find them cheaper. I bought my final working one for $100. Um, 
uh, you can go through the dealer. They're about $1,000 or more for the 05 to 06. And I had an issue trying to buy one without using a VIN for a manual Jeep. Next, you really want to find out if your PCM currently has skim or not skim. The easiest way to find that is if your key is gray and fatter, you will have skim. If it's thinner and black, you're not going to have skim. If your Jeep does have skim, you're going to have to decide to either keep it or remove it. Personally, for the ease of the install and for later ease of use, I would remove it, but you are removing a safety feature of your car as far as theft is concerned. If you do put a new PCM in your truck and your truck starts but shuts off right away, do not continue starting the truck. You'll actually lock the PCM up and have to send it out to get it reset. I've heard even dealers don't like actually resetting that, so you'll probably end up spending $150 to send it out to a PCM tuner to unlock it. The left diagram indicator actually indicates if it has skim but it's not finding the correct skim or skim is messed up. If that shows up, your truck shuts off after you start it, stop starting it immediately. If you do go the route of removing it, it's pretty easy. The skim module is actually in the steering column. It's a ring and a sensor around your ignition. All you have to do is unplug that wire, and when you put in your non-skim enabled PCM, your truck will start just fine, and it won't marry the PCM module to your skim module. Again, we run into another 2005 to 2006 versus the rest of the TJ specific sensors. Uh, this is the crank position sensor. It's located on the bell housing. Depending on your year, I've showed an example picture of a 05 to 06 crank position sensor versus the previous year, uh, just similar to my XJ in the previous year. Uh, I've also included some factory service manual examples of where the connectors are, the pinouts of the connectors in case you have to cut wiring, you should not have to, or if you want to. One of the things I actually went through is I put on a HESCO relocation kit, which ended up causing a major issue. After calling around, I actually I found out that those relocation kits can be thrown off when the engine's at load on the highway which can start throwing a lot of codes, so I suggest you not do that and go with the new bell housing from Advanced Adapters. That seemed to solve my problem right away. It's a new bell housing. It matches up with the clock rings on the uh, flywheel. When sourcing your flywheel clutch uh, PCM crank position sensor, you're going to have to match it up by the PCM and crank position sensor year. So for the 05 to 06, the 42 RLE automatic shares the same crank position sensor location, and flywheel clock ring as the manual counterpart NSG370. The flywheel can actually bolt up to the AX15 and NV3550 just fine. So what you're gonna have to do is source those particular parts. If you end up having issues with your crank position sensor getting codes after the swap, I'd definitely check the gapping. If you're using all the correct parts like the flywheel and the bell housing adapter, the gapping is probably incorrect. It's supposed to be crazy thin. There's reports on forums that there is a paper spacer. I bought two new Mopar sensors and I never had a paper spacer, but about the thickness of a business card should be about right. To show you the difference between the different flywheels, on the left-hand side is the flywheel of AX15 or AKA older Jeeps. The NSG370 or 42 RLE style clock ring, you can see is drastically different. Uh, without the correct cl clock ring and crank position sensor and location, you're going to have a lot of issues. The truck may not start, it may run rough, you'll throw a lot of codes, so you definitely have to make sure that matches up correctly. Thanks for watching so far. I'm going to continue on the rest of the swap in the next video. If you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them below.